Welcome back. In this video, I'm going over how do you pay yourself in your business? How much do I pay myself? How often do I pay myself? Are there any tax advantages to how I pay myself or if I leave money in the business? We'll be breaking it down super simple in this video. If you're new here, my name's Amanda. You're watching the Business Finance Coach where I simplify all the technicalities of business and money to help you succeed because I believe that these tools should be easy and you should feel supported by them. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of my nifty cheat sheets from my courses and you can check out the description box below for free templates and courses. Let's jump into how you pay yourself in your business. Okay, so paying yourself in your business actually isn't that complicated. It's one of the few things that isn't that complicated. But if you are a certain type of business, then things can get more complicated. So the first thing we need to look at is how is your business taxed? For that, we're gonna look at my cheat sheet for legal and tax types of businesses. So basically every business has two types a legal type and a tax type. Regardless of if you've ever done anything to set up your business, you still have a category. So if you did nothing to set up your business, or if you were a good citizen and you went to your state and registered as a sole proprietor, you're a sole proprietor. So a lot of people are sole proprietors and they don't even know it yet. Or you could have chosen to be a sole proprietor because it's the easiest type of business to have because it's not separate from you as a person. You're not creating another person, which is kind of what you do when you make a separate business. You create a separate entity which can be responsible, liable, can own things. So it's a big responsibility, just like creating a human, only not really. So if you're a sole proprietor, the business is taxed as self-employed, which is a good thing because that means you don't have to file a separate business tax return, which just makes things easier because a separate business tax return is a whole other tax return. Now, if you're one of the separate businesses, these are the most commonly used separate businesses, LLC, partnership, corporation, or nonprofit. You should know if you formed one of these because you needed to file specific organizational documents, legal documents, with a state government to form one of these. If you chose an LLC, you can see under tax type, we have the small letters that say disregarded entity. That means that the IRS does not acknowledge the LLC and instead they tax the business based on what it would have been without an LLC and that's based on how many owners the business has. In an LLC, owners are called members. So you can see the single member LLC is taxed as self-employed, just like sole proprietor. If you're a multi-member LLC, meaning two or more owners, then you're taxed like a partnership. Now you can see the next three, the IRS has their own tax return. Partnership business, IRS has a partnership tax return. Corporate business, IRS has a corporation tax return. Nonprofit, there's a nonprofit tax return. Then we have the last type of tax business, which is something that can be elected by any of the other types of separate businesses. It's called the S corporation. So looking at these, if you didn't already know, you should be able to know what type of legal business you are and tax type of business. So now we're gonna look at my business taxes and owner pay cheat sheet, and we'll talk about how you're taxed based on how your business is taxed. If you're sole proprietor, contractor, self-employed, then guess what? It does not matter how you pay yourself at all. That means you just take money out of the bank. In fact, you might not even have a separate business bank account for your business. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't. It doesn't matter that money that you're categorizing as your pay. It just doesn't affect anything. You don't even need to keep track of it. If you keep the business separate, you can keep track of it like we would in a separate business, but the category that you're calling your pay, it doesn't mean anything. You might be saying, well, what 
how does the IRS know what I was paid then? Well, it's based on net income from the business. So what you do need to keep track of is your business income and your business expenses. Business income minus expenses equals net income from the business, and that's considered your pay. You can take it out or spend it however you want. You're taxed on the net income. Now, if you're a single member LLC, then you are a separate business. So for legal purposes, you should use a separate business bank account and you will keep track of the money you put into the business and take out of the business. Okay, those are gonna be tracked under owner's equity accounts because the business in a separate business owns its own bank accounts. And so every transaction needs to be reconciled. And you as a member in an LLC, as an owner, you have the value of your ownership of the business and the money you put into the business increases that value. So any contributions you make, which could be bank transfers when you put money into the business or money you deposit into the business, it's not sales. It's just money you're putting in maybe to cover bills. That money is going to be a contribution to the business that you're going to keep track of under an owner's equity account. And then when you take money out of the business, you might categorize it as pay, you might categorize it as paying yourself back for money you put in. It doesn't matter. Those withdrawals are going to decrease your basis. You can see you never use a W-2 or a 1099 in a self-employed business. So if you have a multi-member LLC or a partnership, your tax is a partnership, the business is also called a pass-through, which means it doesn't pay taxes. It is going to file a separate business tax form because you have two or more owners, and so it's going to use Form 1065, which is just an informational return that reports all of the income and expenses as well as other things, and the owners are going to be taxed on their share of net income, just like in the self-employed, only now it's based on how much of the business do you own. If you own 50%, you're taxed on 50% of the net income, just like paying yourself in a sole proprietor or single member LLC, it doesn't matter how you pay yourself or even what you consider your pay. You can withdraw money from the business. And again, that's going to be tracked in an owner's equity account. Owner's equity accounts can also be called capital accounts because it's the owner's value of the business. The, the value of the business is on the report called the balance sheet, and I have other videos that go through the balance sheet. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Every owner has an owner contributions and an owner withdrawal account, and that's where you handle the money you put in and the money you take out. So there's no way to manipulate what you're taxed on based on what you pay yourself. Guaranteed payments is just a way to allocate some of that net income to one of the partners before then splitting the net income. So you do have that tool. Again, I go through it in more detail in this other video, so I'll leave that one for you. Never 1099 or W-2 for owners in a partnership or multi-member LLC. Now I have another video about guaranteed payments and basis, so we'll link that here, but I wanna explain one other example here so you can see how important it is to really talk to your partners and communicate about how and when you're gonna put money in and take money out and to really be on the same page about this. So for our multi-member LLC example, Let's say the business has $500,000 in sales, $300,000 in expenses, and net income of $200,000. We have two owners, and they each have 50% ownership of the business. So they're each going to be taxed on $100,000 on their Schedule K-1 as ordinary business income, their share of it. Now let's say that the two partners agreed that we're going to live off our other income and just leave all the money in the business to keep reinvesting in the business. That's great. They're still going to pay taxes on their share of net income and that's going to increase each of their basis 
by 100,000. Now let's say partner two didn't play along with the rules and partner two actually took $200,000 out of the business without partner one knowing. Guess what? They're still each taxed on $100,000 of ordinary business income. Now for the partner who withdrew all the cash, that's a withdrawal from the business and that's going to decrease the amount of his basis. If basis goes below zero, you have to pay taxes on the withdrawal. Otherwise, withdrawals aren't taxed, they just impact your basis. So I hope that illustrates how important it is to be communicating and really trust the person that you go into business with. But when it comes to how you pay yourself, how often, the amount, all of that is really flexible and you can do it any way that you and the partners agree to. So next is the corporation. How do you pay yourself in a corporation? An owner who works in a corporation has to be paid with a W-2. Just like any job you've ever had, the owner in a corporation has to be paid that way as well. That does mean that you have to make some sort of regular payments at least monthly. It should all be based on decisions you make though and define in legal documents. The corporation to hold up in court does need to use a lot more legal documents and that's why I don't recommend the corporation since we have these easier options to use if you don't have the funds to plan for all of this or even want to just spend the time planning for all these extra details when you don't need to in an LLC, sole proprietor partnership. Now the corporation pays taxes. It pays a flat 21% tax rate right now. So there is a trade-off there, right? You can consider the amount you pay yourself. Now it's more emphasized in the S corporation, but you do need to be paying yourself a reasonable amount for the work that you're doing. You can take money out of the business, but it's considered a dividend in a corporation and it's taxed at dividend tax rates. Now the nonprofits don't actually pay taxes, but you do pay yourself as a W-2 employee, typically in a nonprofit because they typically use the corporate structure. It's based on each state's rules though. In the S corporation, the S corporation is a combo of self-employed partnership and the corporation. So it's the S corporation, you pay yourself as a W-2 employee. You have to pay yourself as a W-2 employee. And you need to pay yourself reasonable compensation, which is based on what someone would normally be paid for the type of work you're doing and the type of job you're doing. And I have a spreadsheet template that walks you through calculating reasonable compensation for yourself in my paying workers and owners course. And I have another video that will be coming out going over this spreadsheet template. So you would need to be paying yourself through a W-2 at minimum monthly, could be weekly, bi-weekly, but that's just all stuff you set up in your hiring documents and, and all of the legal documents for your business. Now the other thing with the S Corp is that the business doesn't pay taxes. It does file a business return called Form 1120S and the business activity flows through to Schedule K-1s just like in the 1065 for the partnership. So even if you're a solo owner, you'll still file the Form 1120-S if you elect to be taxed as an S-Corp, and then you'll get a Schedule K-1 with the business activity that goes on your return. So you do also pay income taxes on the amount that's left in the business. And that's why there's a big emphasis that you pay yourself reasonable compensation in the S-Corporation because there is an advantage, there can be an advantage with the S Corp since you don't necessarily have to pay self-employment taxes on the net income on the Schedule K-1. However, because of the 20% tax deduction that's been in place, this is not going to be advantageous for most smaller businesses. Check out my other video going over the tax types comparison where it's a spreadsheet template that allows you to compare your business income and expenses under different business taxes, these business taxes. And that will help you with that comparison. But you, one thing that to take away from this is that you can't really leave money in the business 
for it to be, you know, like more tax advantageous. That's not really a thing because businesses are taxed on their net income. Your pay is just an offshoot of that, something that we keep track of and that type of thing. Now, the S-Corp can be an advantage, but again, your income needs to be up pretty high because you're gonna lose some of the advantages of the 20% deduction. So, and then there's a lot more rules that go into paying yourself with the W-2. But of course, I have stuff on all of that, so do check it out. That's all for how you pay yourself, so I hope it's clear. So to recap really quickly, if you're a pass-through entity like the self-employed or the partnership, which would be all of our LLCs, then it doesn't matter how you pay yourself. Your tax on the net income of the business, there's no way to leave money in the business for later to make it better on taxes, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You keep track in single member LLCs, LLCs, partnerships, you keep track of the money you put in and take out, you're not taxed on that, you're taxed on the net income, unless what you take out exceeds your basis in the business. Otherwise, once you go with a corporation or elect S Corp status, you need to pay yourself with a W-2, based on what reasonable pay is. With the corporation, the corporation is gonna pay taxes, so there is a way off there, and you can check out that business tax types comparison spreadsheet to look at when the corporation or S Corp might be advantageous if you have higher business net income. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. If you're new here and you like this type of thing, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like to let YouTube know. Post in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you, what you got out of this, questions you still have. Share this with a friend who might need it. Check out some of the other videos. It should be somewhere around me right now that you might like. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.